Would you like to use sequences to make this funky title sequence for your game? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how. G'day gamers. In this tutorial, I wanna show you how you can use sequences to make this lively title screen for your game. Now, the great thing about sequences is that you can preview the animation before it actually goes into the game. It just makes it a lot easier to see what it's going to look like without any code being added. Now for this tutorial, there's only one line of code, so I'll show you how to do it in drag and drop and in GML. This title screen is taken from a new Udemy course that I'll be releasing soon. So if I press play, you can see that we are using it here as well on these titles. In places, it's more simple than my YouTube series on making a platformer, but it also has other features like power-ups and Mario style mystery blocks, as well as the ability to fire your wand at enemies. There are checkpoints as well as many other tricks. So as of recording this video, the course is not currently available, but if you're watching this a little later, you can look down in the description and I'll place a coupon code, which will give you a super discount on the regular retail price of the course. So check that out if that's something you're interested in. But back to the tutorial. Now, the first thing you need to do is have your title page all constructed. Now I'm over in Photoshop at the moment, but you can do this in GIMP or Aceprite or any graphic program you like. The only thing you have to be aware of is that you need to import everything that you want to animate as a separate sprite. So for example, if I firstly want to import the background in Photoshop, if I hold down Alt and click on the eye, it'll actually make that layer the only layer I can see, and then I can save that element. And then if you hold down Alt and click again on the eye, it'll bring everything back. And this way I can just take each element and save it as a separate file. So if we go back and look at my player, for example, if I hold down Alt and click on that and you get the player by itself, what you want to be doing there is make sure you're trimming the image. So you can go to image and just go down to trim and press OK. And that'll then make sure that the image is cut down to that size and then you can export just that. So what you want to do is go to file and go to export and then just go down to save for web. Here is the shortcut, which I like to use. And then you want to save this element separately so that you can import it into Game Maker. So once you have all your elements that you're going to use, you want to go back over to Game Maker and you want to bring those elements in. But before I do that, I just want to show you these legendary Patreons, Kaiser Ho, Andy K, and Smash TRM. Their support helps me to make content for you guys. So back in Game Maker, here's a folder that has all the elements that I'm going to use. So we want the player, a background, I'm going to bring the B in, and I'm going to also bring that title text in. So there are a few other things which I use in the course. Uh, we're not going to need those for this tutorial. So let's drag all of those into sprites. Now for the player, I'm going to make sure that we're on middle center. And that's so when we actually scale it up, it comes in from the center position. Now the background doesn't need to change. We can leave the origin up here because we're not going to scale that. The B, we need that at the middle center. And also for the title text. So now that we have those in, we want to go create a new sequence. I'm going to right click, go down to sequence. I'm just going to call it SEQ title. And if we go and look in our room and just double click on the room and look at the properties, the default size for Game Maker is now 1366 by 768. I'm just going to make it 1280 by 720, which is uh, HD resolution. And we'll just go back to our sequence and up the top, we can set the size of our canvas. I'm going to set it to the same, which is 1280 by 720. Now for the origin, what makes things easier if you make this negative half of the width? So negative 640 and this one is negative 360. It just means when you create instances that are the full size, you can create them at zero, zero, and they'll be positioned in the right location. So the next thing we want to do is drag across our background. So if we drag it in, it creates a track here on the sequence and we can just snap it here to the origin position right there. So how sequences work is it's kind of like a video editor or After Effects in that we have a playhead, we have an in and an out, and we have a duration of the sequence. So I'm going to change the duration to 120 frames or 120 steps. And we have nothing here at the moment, even though we dragged in that title. And the reason is, is because it's only limited to right at the start here. So you can grab that and drag it all the way to the end. 
You can also right click on it and stretch the asset key and that'll put it the whole distance. Now I'm not going to do anything else with that because for our background, we don't need anything else to happen. I'm actually just going to lock it so that I can't click on it anymore. The next thing I'm going to bring in is the title and the same thing. I'm going to drop it down here this time though, and that'll appear directly above and it'll appear in the right location. So if you've got the origin set, you can drag them down here and they will just appear correctly, or you can drag them in this way and it'll appear where your cursor is. So for this one, we want to make sure we right click and stretch the asset that way. So if I just scrub the playhead back and forth here, we can see that we have no animation set. So let's go back to the start here. So frame zero and the little box here we can bring down, which shows the parameter tracks and there are various things that we can set per track. So if I choose scale, then it drops down the settings for scale and I can add keyframes here. So for example, one here at the start and I can set the scale. If I click on this link value and set it to zero, then the scale of our text is zero when we first play the animation. And if we go all the way to the end, and we add another keyframe with this little button. And then I set the scale to 100. So now we have the scale being zero at the start and 100 at the end. If I press play, you can see that this animates in between these keyframes. And they call this a tween for that reason. So even though there's an animation, it's not very dynamic. It just goes from small to big and it is completely linear, which means the scale growth is the same as we play the animation. Now Game Maker's recent version has added the ability to change those animation curves so that we can turn these keyframes into something a bit nicer. So in order to animate this using curves, what I want to do is click on the curve mode and we want to convert those keyframes to curves. So once we press that, we are now shown a graph which shows what happens to our scale over time. It goes from zero up to one. Now this button controls the scale of what we're seeing. If I had the upper as one and the bottom as zero, you can see that we go from zero to one over time. But we have some curves we can use. So if I click on the X data, I can go to curves, go down to our visor curves, and we have all these different curves we can use. I'm gonna use the elastic curve for this one, and that's applied to the X, and then I also need to do the same for the Y. And you can see that the curve changes for both. So now when we press play, we get a nice elastic animation when the text scales up. Now be aware, you can also make changes to these yourself. If I click away and then click on one and drag it up, I can make the Y more pronounced or also grab these and drag them to change it as well. But the thing is that that only affects the Y, the red color. We need to do the same to the blue. Otherwise you're gonna get a stretched animation like we are there until it comes down. So you could take the blue and do the same thing if you like and make sure they match. And then when you play, you'll get the scale being quite a bit larger as it comes in. So it's up to you if you want to play around with those. I'm just going to undo that change and put it back to what it was. So now what I want to do for our animation is have the player appearing over here. So I'm going to drag this to 30 so I'm just going to deselect that and I'm going to drag the player just over to here. And we just want to add the scale parameter. And if I just take off the graph here, we can make sure that we right click and stretch the key asset, make sure it stretches the whole way. And for our scale, I'm going to set the scale here at zero and then go all the way to the end and we're going to set the scale to 100. So now we just have that smooth animation. We need to go into this button to toggle the curve mode. And then for our scale, we'll click on the scale and convert it to a curve. So now if I go here and I change visor to elastic, it gets applied to all 120 frames. But I don't want that. I want the animation to start just here. So what you can do is if you click outside and drag, you can select multiple keyframes and then you can go and change your curve to say elastic and then it'll only apply to the ones that you've selected. So that means we have a zero scale for this initial time and then around 30, it'll start to come on in. 
Now we need to do the same for the Y and you can also go here if you want to do it. I can hold shift and select one, two keyframes and then change this to elastic and you want to make sure that those two match. So now if we go back to zero and press play, we'll get the player coming in a little bit later than what the animation on the words do. Of course you play around with it how you like, but I'm going to do the same for the B. I'm going to click away and then drag the B in and just place it here. So we'll just go down here, make sure we turn off the curve mode. And for our B, we'll just drag that across and make sure we stretch the asset to the full length. Now, because I want the scale from the player, we can actually right click and copy that and we can paste it to the B. So now we get the same animation for the B. And I want to duplicate this, so Control D. And this time we're going to look at the position and we're going to move the B down to here. Now you'll notice what will happen here though is when it plays, the B tries to move back to its position because position has a keyframe over here. So what we want to do is just click on that keyframe, press delete, and that way the movement position is set just from this one keyframe. So there's our animation. Now, how do we get that into the room? Well, let's go into our room. But before I do that, I just want to acknowledge these epic supporters who donate over on Patreon and enable me to produce content for you guys. So back in Game Maker, I'm going to create an asset layer to place it on. I'm just going to call this text underscore 100. This is just a labeling way that I like to do. It's just a method that I use because numbering is a lot easier to add more layers in the future rather than calling them mid layer, four layer, background layer, for example. So I'm just going to grab the sequence and drag it in. Now I'm going to turn off the snap to grid and then we can just snap it to the origin up there. So let's just press play and we'll test that out. Great, so we get that nice animation. Everything looks really dynamic. Now what you'll notice is that the B stop flapping. The animation stops playing. And that's because when the sequence ends, all the animations will stop. So how do we get an animation to continue to play after we've had an intro animation from that sprite? Well, let's go look at our sequence again. And let's duplicate this. And I'm going to call this sequence title Bs. Let's open that up. Make sure you double click it and open that particular one up. Now here, we don't want the player or the text or the background. And for the Bs, we can actually go all the way to the end and we can get rid of the scale as well. And you notice when we play this, we have lots of cycles of their animation. And we're only interested in one cycle because we're going to loop it. So I'm going to change this to 11. So only 11 frames, and when we play that, you can see that it's up, it's down, and that's it, and then it repeats again if we press this repeat mode. And then we have the Bs continuing to flap. But how do we get this sequence into our title sequence? Well, let's stop this. Let's go into our title sequence. And what I'm going to do with the Bs is on the last frame, we just zoom in, we can hold down Control, middle mouse to scroll, I'm going to just drag this back so that the Bs don't appear on the last frame that the animation stops at. Now at this point in 118, so I'm going to go here to add a moment and essentially this will create a function at this particular frame that'll play. So let's add a function and at the moment this is in GML. So here we need to create the sequence. So I'm just going to use the function layer sequence create. And what we need to add is the layer name. So I'm going to have a layer called text underscore 90, which we can just create. So that's going to be a new asset layer. And we'll just call that text underscore 90 because it's above the 100. Okay, back over here, that's going to be our creation layer. And for the X and Y position, it's going to be zero and zero because of how we set it up. And then the sequence name. So sequence title Bs. So now this function will run when this moment happens. So what happens here is when the playhead reaches this point, this function is going to run. 
I'm actually going to change this to 117 because we do need to give it enough time to be created the next frame. And putting it there gives it enough time to be created before they disappear here. If you're using drag and drop, it's very similar. If I go here and look at this particular moment, you can see it's basically the same thing. We have a function. And then what I'm doing here is creating the sequence. Over on the code blocks, there is a create sequence code block. You just set the sequence name, the position, and the layer, the same as what I've done over in the GML code. So essentially, it's the same thing. You're just using this particular code block. So back in here, and let's test this out. I'm going to press play. So that looks great. The bees are in the right position, but I've actually noticed that I've got this black line up here. So just go back to the sequence title there and make sure the position of the background is correct. Yeah, mine's a little bit out. So you can actually click on the position and delete it and that'll reset it. And then you can just drag it into the position and make sure the position is set to minus 640 for my own case and minus 360 and make sure that that is the same as your origin position here. And that'll position that in the correct spot. Let's press play and test that again. That's better. Now, when the animation finishes, you'll see the bees are in the exact right position and they'll animate and they'll keep flapping. So whether you do an animation of bees or whatever, you might want an animation to continue after you've done the initial animation and that's how you do it. You add a moment to your sequence, which essentially runs any function you'd like, and you can do anything like this for your sequences. Now be aware, if you are playing a sequence and it vanishes from view, it doesn't mean once the animation stops that the sequence disappears from memory. You need to go and destroy that sequence and any instances that are created as part of the sequence. That's just something you need to do to ensure you clean up anything that the sequence creates. Now, before I finish up, I want to show these rare Patreons. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate your generosity as well. So that's all for this tutorial. So make sure you click like and subscribe and also click that bell to so be notified of my next video. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you in the next one.